this is a special question i did take some time going through it let's go ahead and take a look calculate the magnitude of the initial charge qb given to ball b if the mass of each ball was 0.012 kilograms let's go through our question statement and see what is happening so two identical neutral balls a and b are suspended from a ceiling by insulated light inextensible strings of equal length as shown in the diagram below yeah we can see our two identical neutral spheres are being suspended there by two strings of equal length what happens next ball b is then given an initial negative charge qb of unknown magnitude right so initially they are neutral and now b is given a negative charge of unknown magnitude right so a still neutral and then b negatively charged okay let's carry on the two balls attract each other obviously uh, well it's not obvious to some so if you have positive and neutral they attract but even if you have negative and neutral they still attract neutral attracts with both positive and negative right i did explain that in a separate video but let's carry on the two balls are made to touch and then they repel each other the balls come to rest with their centers 10 centimeters apart so that each string makes an angle of nine degrees with the vertical see the diagrams below okay let's see the touch gets separated angle of 9 degrees with the vertical in the first question 7.2.1 we define Coulomb's law and then in 7.2.2 we're supposed to calculate the magnitude of the initial charge qb given to ball b if the mass of each ball was 0.012 kilograms okay so uh these spheres they are at rest at this point when they are 10 centimeters apart from each other right so take a look at this we have a and b b has a magnitude of qb initially right and then a has a magnitude of zero because it is initially uh, neutral and then they are made to touch and separate when they touch and separate what is the new charges on sphere a and b we have q nu being equals to q1 plus q2 divided by 2 but the charge of sphere a we have it it is neutral so that is zero and then what about sphere b sphere b it is given an initial negative charge qb so let's write qb there and then we divide everything by 2 so the new charge on the two spheres q nu is equals to qb over 2 so this is the new charge in both spheres a and b after they touch and separate okay and then when they touch and separate take a look at this the balls come to rest with the centers 10 centimeters apart from each other so when they come to rest them when they're 10 centimeters apart from each other this is what is happening so let's focus on sphere a for instance this is also going to work if we focus on sphere b so they have the same magnitude now so they are repelling each other so this is the electrostatic force of sphere b on a and then we have the tension the tension is what's balancing the force of b on a so let me not just say the tension but rather the x component of the tension so this is what we have we have fb on a being equals to tx the x component of the tension we can also use sphere b we'll still get the same answer so you don't you know have to worry about that right so that is the situation we have and that is what is going to allow us to find our answer well we can further we can add more forces here because that tension force uh, that is the x component on a right but obviously we also have the y component which is t y and then on top of the y component we have the weight 
So this is how we can solve this question. We can say, because we want to find QB, don't forget that we want to calculate the magnitude of the initial charge QB. QB is what we're interested in. So if we take a look at the forces acting along the x-axis, we can say that FB on A is equals to Tx. We can say this because it is said that the balls come to rest. So FB on A is equals to Tx. But what is the electrostatic force? Is K Q1 Q2 divided by R squared. And then here we have Tx. Let's leave that in that way for the time being. So or oh, we can just write this T um cos of theta or sine of theta. T cos of theta. So that is what we have there. We have T cos of theta. So K that is 9 times 10 to the power 9. Q1, the magnitude on A, it is QB over 2 after the charge. And then the magnitude on B, it is also QB over 2 after the charge, divided by the distance between them squared. So the distance between them is 10 centimeters, but we use meters in physics. So that is 10 divided by 100, dividing by 100, 10 centimeters to meters. We square that. That is equal to T cos of theta. So let's take a look at our angle. We have T what? So take a look at this. Um, I'm just going to put the sketch here. Okay. So here we have an angle of 9 degrees. There we have an angle of 9 degrees. And then obviously we know that here we have 90 degrees. So what is this angle that you're supposed to use? This angle here is going to be 81 degrees. So in order to find uh, the x component of the tension, we're going to say t cos of 81 degrees. That is going to allow us to find the x. Because we know fully well that cos of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So cos of theta is equal to the adjacent is x and the hypotenuse is the tension. Um, this is Tx, by the way. So we have Tx being equal to T cos of theta, as you can clearly see. So this works. Right, let's delete that and carry on. So we have T cos of 81. So on the numerator on the left hand side, uh, we can take. Okay, how, how can we solve that? There's a couple of ways we can use. Well, uh, 9 times 10 to the power 9 is the same as 9 times 10 to the power 9 over 1. So let's just multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. If we multiply the numerators together, QB multiplied by QB is QB squared. So we're going to have 9 times 10 to the power 9 QB squared divided by 2 multiplied by 2 is 4. Everything divided by so now we are concentrating on the denominator. The, domin the denominator is 10 over 100, everything squared. So this is, uh, it is in scientific. Let me see if it looks better in normal. This is 0 0.01 and it is equals to T cos of 81 degrees. Well, we can further simplify this, obviously. Uh, we can further simplify this, but instead of doing that, let's find the tension first and then be able to find QP. Okay, so how are we going to find the tension? Let's go back to our diagram. TY is equal to the weight. We have the weight, obviously, because it's just the mass of the object multiplied by the gravity. So it will be easy to find TY. Let me show you. So Ty is equal to the weight. So T should be the weight divided by sine of theta. Because Ty is T sine of theta. So T, the weight, what is the mass? 0 0.012 multiplied by 9.8 divided by sine of theta. So this is sine of 81. This is equal to. 
So the numerator 0 0.012 multiplied by 9.8 divided by sine of 81. Um, this is 0 0.1191. So there we go, we have our tension. So now we can substitute it back here. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, well, because I can, I just rip through space and time. Let me do that, let me rip through space and time. All right, so I have, I think I just deleted something I had solved there, yes. This is what I want to drag down, not everything. This is what I want to drag down. So let me drag these down. All right. So now I have 9 times 10 to the power 9 QB squared divided by 4. Everything divided by 0 0.01 being equals to T. T is 0 0.11. 9, 1, and then cos of 81. So uh, let me put the right hand side in the calculator. All right. So 0 0.1191 multiplied by cos of 81. My calculator is in degrees. I'm getting 0 0.0186. And then now let's go back to the to the what let's go back to the left hand side so in the left hand side let's change this division to multiplication how do we do that we do this we do it in the following way so we have 9 times 10 to the power 9 qb squared everything over 4 uh, let's just take these to the right just a little bit and then multiply it by so when you multiply so initially, if you're dividing by A over B, when you change it to multiplication, you just multiply by B over A. So here we had 0 0.01 over 1, and now we're going to have 1 over 0 0.01. So there we go. Multiplying the numerator, uh, the terms on the numerator uh, together, we're going to get 9 times 10 to the power 9 QB squared divided by 4 multiplied by 0 0.01 0 0.04 so again let me pull that down okay so in the denominator i have 0 0.04 this is equals to 0 0.0186 okay let's cross multiply we're gonna have 9 times 10 to the power 9 qb squared being equals to 0 0.04 multiplied by 0 0.0186 that is equals to let me put my calculator in scientific 7.44 times 10 to the minus 4 i'm going to divide both sides by 9 times 10 to the power 9 so divided by 9 times 10 to the power 9 i get qb squared being equals to 80.2667 times 10 to the minus 14. Now I take square roots on both sides. So let me go ahead and do that. I get 2.8752 times 10 to the minus 7 columns. So there we go. That is. 7.2.2.